uh, have a new X1000, they'd like to show it to you. So here we go. It's yours, Brian. So one of the surprising things when we were first turning on the computer, TuneNet started to work again for the internet radio stations. Now, you know, probably some have known that there has been a patch that somebody has created, um, and you can actually go to this website uh, to find out more about it. It's um, it's actually on OS4 Depot. Um, just search for TuneNet patch, and you, you will now be able to see all of the radio stations that um, comes up in TuneNet. So, um, and I discovered a very cool um, station that somebody has on. A, I'm assuming maybe a real Amiga that he's actually streaming some old mods, and that's what you were listening to just a moment ago. So, um, so I was very surprised that TuneNet now is working with the radio stations and everything, so that's nice. Um, so we're going to go through kind of a first user experience. Um, and I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to reboot the computer just so you get to hear the startup sound. If you haven't heard the X1000 startup sound, whichever you have. <laughs> so we're rebooting the computer right now. This is the um, just booting up workbench. And so that 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 sound, um, um, who created that? He actually he made a whole mo uh, MP3 of it, and this is a shorter version of it. But it's actually based on the X. I mean, the original Amiga 1000s uh, sound that was um, done during boot up time. So I'm going to show you the original sound from the um, 1000 and how it's very much like this this one. So if you go to the sound here. Okay. So, that, so there's actually some sounds that came with OS4 and one of them is the A1000. Um, and we'll play that. And everybody will probably recognize that for the 1000. And um, for the X1000, I'll play that one more time. And you can hear that same, same sound. And I thought it was just so cool to have that. So, um, now, um, so one of the other things that um, does very well is um, video playing. And so we have the program in player that's um, MUI based um, installed on here and, uh, and the, the, the forums on Hyperion and it, you know it is a great place to find out you know things about how to get things configured out, get things working and everything so you have to definitely check out that and for the X1000 Steve Tillet originally added a frequently asked questions uh, site and so that's another place to get information about issues and commonly asked questions. But for mPlayer um, that you can download from OS4 Depot, one thing that um, people have mentioned is that in order to get to work, you have to set the video driver to Cypher Graphics and the audio driver to a AHI Dev. So after you do that, um, you can actually play some of the um, you know movies. And we have a camera that can um, record you know, dot .mov files. And so this player can play that. Uh, I'm gonna open up one right now, kind of a, to show kind of some of the things that we found in the 
X one thousand case and just you know to have a little bit of fun of seeing the inside of um, X one thousand. Make sure that you have it in the right orientation, like that. And also, when we um, got the computer, we checked that this is compatible with the US Winston Fold. So it is. And uh, we had a user own power cable. And now I'm going to open up the case. And you'll see that inside the case, um, the Revita, the Screws and extra brackets for the case. I should open up right here. And also, you can see inside we have um, one hard drive that has two terabytes um, and a video card, Ethernet card, and also a cable um, connects to the serial port here. So that just uh, kind of a Quick look of the X1000 on the inside. Um, let me go back to my notes. Um, yeah, so one thing is um, we found that um, there, you know, we haven't installed it yet, but you can actually, so one thing on the X1000 case, there's not a hard drive LED light, but there are um, some dockies that you can add down here to show you your hard drive activity, and that's one thing that we want to install. Um, so yeah, again, um, you know, this is, these are some of the valuable resources. Um, the Hyperion um, forums, um, the wiki site that has the frequently asked questions, and also AE on site. Um, now uh, we're going to um, show one way that we can check the mic, um, and we. Now we got the X1000 kind of recently, and so the HD audio driver was finished by that time. So we were, we were pleased, and um, you know, for uh, to to get this to work, one thing that's very nice for this driver it tells you exactly where your input um, for you know, <coughs> different units that you can select. So for um, this example, we have our mic connected to the rear, the rear, and it tells you the color and everything. So that's, that's, that makes it very easy to figure out. So I mean, you can actually, you know, select the line in, the front mic, rear mic, or the CD um, to record from. So we have it set to the rear mic, and um, now you can probably use other programs, but we found that you know through a AHI. There's actually an AHI device, and um, which is the audio device, and as long as that is mounted, so you just you can if it's in your storage drawer, just double click on that, and that'll get mounted. Then you can actually use just regular DOS, you know, commands. To, you know, so when you say copy from audio to a file, it's actually going to record something through the mic. And so there's some um, different um, parameters that you can have with this command, you know, so you can say how long you want to record for for 10 seconds. Um, we're going to record in the AI, AIFF format. Um, it's going to be 16-bit and the frequency is going to be 44.1 kilohertz. It's going to be in stereo and we're going to use unit zero. So when we do this um, and type it in the shell, For 10 seconds, it's going to record. This is the X1000 mic test. Testing one, two, three. So it's actually it's still recording even right now. So now it's, it's done. And um, with that, um, this is just because we're not, we probably have to re sign into the hotel network here. Okay, so um, now if you copy from the um, from RAM to the audio device, you don't even have to have TuneIn or anything. You just use a AHI to play AFF files, actually. And so, um, when you do that, you'll hear. This is 
So, <laughs> so it works. Yay. <laughs> AHI -A -A works. HD audio works. Um, and so we were we were happy about you know, you know everything was working very well. So um, one one thing that we've um, we installed also was uh, the LPR device, which which a lot I mean probably many have been using this for network printing and. Um, you know, we have had some issues with the LPR device that we've, we've mentioned to uh, Steve during the weekend. But um, uh, you can download this, this from uh, OS4 Depot and it'll allow you to um, print to a network printer. There's a few things that you have to do to make it work. Um, now I think one thing is uh, there's a NSD patch.config and here you can redirect um, you know, some of the original devices to the LPR device. So like, on the original Amiga, there was a parallel that device, and you can redirect that so that LPR would be used instead. Now most programs, uh, maybe you don't have to use this, but there are some, sometimes you may have to go through the parallel port. So that'd be re redirected to the LPR. So we, we, we did these changes in the, um, NSD patch.config file, um, which we'll show you here. So, uh, yeah, just to show you, to install this, um, you go to, you can go to devs, and um, you'll see that we have all of our devices in here, including the uh, LPR.device. And that's all you, that's all you actually, that's the only thing that you really need, um, except for reconfiguring the NSD patch. Oops. Actually, we'll show you this in multi-view. So we were very um, conscientious in our, you know, uh, commenting our, the code, in a sense, down here. So we, we told ourselves that we actually changed this file <laughs> um, and commented it out uh, a line above uh, line 670, and I'd be out of these two. Now, like even the A1 parallel device, maybe you don't really even need this because there's no parallel port even on this X1000, so. Um, okay, so after that's configured, then the next thing is um, there's a few environment variables you have to set up. Um, there's, there's some documentation. One of the simplest is just to use the, the, the raw setting, and um, we have it, our server set up to port 9100, and our address is set to um, 198.168.1.11. So if you know the address of your printer, and um, you know, I th you know. I think a lot of devices support the raw mode, and you know your port number. That's all you need to do to configure in the invark area. Um, so if you go to um, so in this file, we just have. Uh, should we, let me let me open it up into a, a different. <laughs> so that, that's all we have in this file. So but that's all you need to have uh, LPR configured. And okay, there is one more thing. And if you go into the printer, you want to set up um, that the that for your printer that you're going to be using the LPR device, and you can use whatever printer driver. You know, we have a uh, desk jet. So with that, we were able to print to our network printer um, that's in a different room. Now, um, one, one thing that was, um, you know, kind of a workaround that we found to print from a web browser. Um, you know, it's been difficult to print from web browsers just because we don't have a lot of printing capability in, um, in OS4, but um, there's a very cool tool um, that allows you to do screen grabs. So we're, we're going to open up the web, a web browser. <coughs> And 
actually roll. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna restart the network actually because I'm not connected to the um, internet. show you an example of, assuming that this is the web page, since right now I'm having a little bit of trouble of, okay, here, I guess it did. Okay. Something is... I can still show you the example of how to do um, a screen grab, printing from a screen grab. So in Workbench, um, there's a tool in Utilities called sGrab. So once you open up this program, um, there's a lot of different options about how you can do screen grabs. Um, we're going to grab only contents, and we're going to give us three, three seconds to prepare our screen. And we're going to copy it to the clipboard. So I'm going to um, say mark and grab. And I'm going to prepare what I want to um, grab. Now I've got a crossbar where I can um, drag exactly what I want to print and screen grab. Um, so now um, it's been copied to the clipboard. I'm going to hit view. It's actually now opening up multi view. And I can hit print, and it'll print that to the printer. So it's just a kind of a quick, easy workaround when you want to print something from the web. Um, you know, you can always copy and paste text, but if you want graphics and stuff, this is very easy. We were able to print out some coupons and stuff, and it, it worked well. So. Um, What's it save the file as? Well, in, in this case, um, it's just in the clipboard, actually. So if you go to the clipboard area in RAM, it's right here. So um, you can actually save it to a file if you like instead. Um, we can, I can show you that. Utilities, screen grab. Um, so instead of doing the clipboard, you can actually save it to a file. We can do um, RAM, let's say tests. Um, and you can actually change the format that you want if you want a JPEG or a PNG, it allows you to do that. So you can, you can actually save it in that format and we can do the same thing. Actually, in this case, I can just, I can grab anything I want on the screen. So I can even grab, let's say this icon and I can view that and there it is and I can print that if I like, you know. So it's, any, any, any program, anything that's listed here, you can actually grab. It's a pretty cool program. Um, okay, so that's oh, okay, so one, one other thing that we discovered um, is that if you have um, like a SATA based you know CD-ROM drive or something you want to play um, audio from um, with the Build with the tool that comes with OS4. Um, there's a program called Play CD, and so um, if, you know we had a little bit of trouble getting this to work on our X1000 initially, but um, with some help from the club actually, and also we found it on um, one of the forums. There's a tool type that you can um, change, uh, and if you use, enable use AHI. 
then um, you will be allowed to play um, audio CDs. Um, otherwise, with the, some of the SATA-based drives, it won't work because there's not a separate audio connector on the back of the drives anymore. So um, with that, and also um, another nice feature of this program um, is that if you haven't used some of the CD players, or maybe if you've used it on probably Windows, um, you know, it can actually tell you what your tracks are in your CD. Normally there's no names for all your tracks that are on your CD, but on the internet there's a database. And this program actually goes out on the database, finds out what your CD is, and shows you all your track names on your CD. So that's a very cool uh, feature. Um, with this program, we have noticed that there is some uh, choppiness when it plays. On TuneNet, it's fine. Some other programs that we've tried on uh, um, OS4 Depot, it's fine. So we know it's probably something to do with the Play CD. Um, OK, so we got, oh yeah, so now Timberwolf versus OWB. Um, you know, just when I was trying OWB um, a little bit ago and comparing when I had my SAM440 up, it's just so much faster. Then you go to um, Timberwolf and it's like, you know, it's way faster. It's a little bit unstable, um, but, um, you know, with some improvements in Timberwolf, I think that would be the browser to go for. We've been using OWB more because it's a little bit more stable. But in terms of speed and some additional features and everything, we actually were able to um, use the Yahoo IM messaging <coughs> through, through the web browser and everything, and it was working very well on Timberwolf. And so we were very impressed about that. So, um, now if I can, let me see if I can get the network back up and then we can try and I can give you a comparison between the two browsers. Um, I'm going to try to just reboot, actually. for that. Um, one thing is I, um, I was installing the SDK. Actually, I'm going to, um, uh, I want to show you the speed of how fast SDK was actually installed. It's a huge package, a lot of files. On my SAM 440, it took probably 20, 30 minutes. Um, on my X1000, it seemed like it was done in less than five minutes. It's like, it just, it, it's, it's, it was amazing how, how fast it was. So I wanted just to show you how fast like installations like that is. And, how, and just even decompressing the files and everything is just really fast. So um, I'm going to uh, just, let me just rename this to old. And we'll put that in here. And So we have the, we have the, an archive of the newest SDK that came out just probably within the last week, and we're going to um, decompress everything to RAM. Um, all these files here. Um, now in RAM, we're going to open up the SDK install, and we're going to install the SDK. And okay, I, I just 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 to point out how how big this 
then this is some of these files are compressed actually. So if you go to the information, you find out that with the files that are in here right now, it's 79 megabytes, but it's, a lot of files are in LHA still. So I'm going to do next, and I'm going to install everything onto uh, my system partition. So it's going to create an SDK drawer. It's going to do the full installation. And um, we'll just let it install here. This is the base installation. So we don't have to wait for that, right? I mean, we have multitasking on the Amiga. So let's try the web browser again. Ah, and we're actually back on the internet. So this is actually, um, you can actually go to, um, let's see. So it's still installing. We're, in, we're 13 to 32. So actually, there it is. It's done. Uh, it was done in the background. Um, we're going to say finish, and I'm going to just show you how, how how many files and everything are in this directory. It's a 211 megabyte directory, and I installed that probably in less than five minutes. I mean, it's just it's incredible. Okay. Um, so this is the. Uh, AE on site, and um, maybe just as a comparison, we can maybe just watch how long that takes to load, and then we're going to try to load um, Timberwolf. You can see a difference. It's faster. Um, you know, we can even go to maybe like Yahoo or something a little bit more that has lots of things. I load it up in a few seconds. And over here. It's still still going. So you can see a huge difference in the performance on the two browsers. And for whatever reason, this one didn't get formatted correctly. Let's see if it. Oh, so there's also that too. So there's a little bit more capability on the Timberwolf in terms of being more latest, later to the um, browsing. So um, one thing is that when we got the X1000, we had a, a, a beta version of Timberwolf, which prevented us from doing copy and paste. Um, and we found that um, the Freedom Brothers had released the, the latest one. And so we were able to install that. And we got a lot of the great features that they've you know, finalized on, which um, we have a download browser, I mean, download uh, management. So if you go to like OS4 Depot, Sometimes I've noticed 
Yeah, there's some, some, there something going on there, yes. Uh, uh, but uh, the thing that happens is it does crash. And because of that, we've been using OWB more for the most part. So, um, if I put it to a fresh start, I'll go to the Timberwolf. It's fine by itself, yeah. but once I start using a few other things, it helps. Yeah, yeah. And, and maybe, uh, it seems like when, it, when we were starting to use two browsers like this, after a while there was some interaction or something going on, and yeah. seems like I'm not sure if it's the browsers or just something that's going on, yeah. But, I mean, like, for the, um, one thing about Timberwolf is that you can actually uh, save it out, and, it, and it, it'll, uh, oh, sorry, we, can actually, we have to select, save a file, and it, you know, it comes up with a requester, and, and actually there is a download manager here, so on OWB, at least the version I'm using, maybe, I haven't really used MUI OWB much, but on this version of OWB, it doesn't have a, it doesn't show you what's downloading or anything, so this is, this is very nice. The other thing that's nice is that if, if there is a link on here that's a PDF file, um, it will open up any PDF for you automatically. So that's, that's also nice. Um, yeah, is there any other any questions? Um, I think I've covered most of what I wanted to cover. Um, let me just, just double check here that if I... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I could have just, you know, yeah, I, I, I think I, I closed ODBB just now, yes. Yeah. Actually, there is, okay, I, I do remember, there is one more thing I wanted to show you, and that's the um, speed of, actually, I was very impressed when the X1000 was brought here in Henry West uh, a year or two ago, and I was able to run the UAE on it, and um, it's like, almost like real time, it feels like you're actually able to run, you know, those classic games, classic programs through UAE, and it's like real time. It's not any sluggish or anything, it's like, it feels, the response and everything feels very, very good, so, uh, let, me, let me just show you that. Um, let me just, and with the one UAE program, it makes it very, very convenient to start up a, um, an ADF. All you have to do is you, you have an ADF, and you double click it, and it's gonna load it. And there's some emulation for showing you the old floppy disk. Um. <laughs> It's been a very popular game. I played it a lot on my brother's uh, Amiga. So, oops, actually, I'm hitting the pause button by accident. I'm not so good at using the keyboard controls, so. So, it's, uh, oops. So, playing classic games and everything is, the only thing I need to get is a, probably a nice joystick. Uh, I think, you know, I think Amiga Kit has a uh, USB type joystick and it'll be much be easier than a keyboard, so. And I think to quit, it's like control, 
Yeah, control alt Q. So it's it's I mean actually all all of those four now has this run UAE program. It makes it very easy to run some classic games and everything. It's just on X1000 is it's fast. So um, any questions? Have you installed QT? I have not. I I not I need to understand more about what QT is. And I've heard about um, a new browser that people have been working on called QT Web. Right. And um, it seems uh, like there's one person that's uh, working on it, and it's in a beta, uh, it seems like in a beta state on OS4 Depot. Um, yeah, I hadn't installed but, it yet. Uh, but I haven't tried it, so okay. um, we can give it a try. I'm sure it's probably a little harder than just installing one app. Yeah, if, 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 yeah. If there's a lot of complaints, I don't know. Take you a long time. Yeah, yeah. It'll take me some time to figure that out. Yeah. Okay. I won't go. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, we you know we've tried um, you know art. Uh, I can give you one more example of a of a program that uh, is working very well. is FX Paint. We were demoing this to a club, and this is. Uh, working very well. Actually, though, I guess we have a different screen mode for this program, so I think. So we, got, we just got a. So it uses the last. It looks like it uses the last. Like this is actually like a USB drive that we were using here. So, okay. Settings. Let's just let's try to go back to a. Um, Yeah, I mean, this, this program is. I mean, I, I have not used this program extensively, but there's it, it works very well. If a little bit that I've used it, so. Um, so you know. Uh, is there any questions? I don't have a lot to demo on this one, but it, it, it's working in in a you know because it was originally based. On, well, this one I think this version I have here looks like it might be the 68k version. Um, Yeah, is there any, uh, that's pretty much it. So, is there any, any questions? Um, I think I, 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 I shut it down. Yeah, I shut it down actually. Why well, shut it down? Okay. Um, yeah, I. I, I I kept it open for some time. It allowed to download the, one of the things I was downloading, but I think I shut it down probably midway through the. Yeah. 
But yeah, we've been very happy with X1000 and hoping to see multi-core support sometime soon. When did you get it on? Just July, actually, so. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.